win for India will keep their hopes alive of entering the Super Six. A win for Zimbabwe will almost certainly make them qualify for the Super Six stage. They're top of the table with eight points. Australia, two matches, two wins. Don't forget, Zimbabwe got four points uh, for England forfeiting the match here. Now, the teams for today's game, two pretty strong sides. India, changes in their side, changes in their batting lineup. Sachin Tendulkar will open the batting with Virendra Sevag and India bringing back Ashish Nera instead of Anil Kumble. As far as Zimbabwe are concerned, changes in their side as well. There's no Henry Olonga today, so Andy Blicknot comes into the side, but otherwise a side packed with batsmen. They've also got Brian Murphy, the leg spinner, playing today. So Zimbabwe was the team that won the toss. Heat streak decided to field first. Let's now join the action at the start of the Indian innings. Virendra Seva, one day career, is coming to 60 matches now, an average of 35.10. What it doesn't show is the excellent strike rate that he carries with those figures. Best of 126. And when he gets those big knocks, they come at a rapid rate. At the other end, of course, is Sachin Tendulkar, who has played quite well in this tournament. Not the best of Tendulkar yet, but he's been amongst the runs. 11,000 runs, an average of 43.74, best of an unbeaten 186. Over 300 matches. Heat streak is already. Ashoka De Silva gives the thumbs up and calls play. Two slips in place for heat streak. Here's the first ball of this very crucial clash. Off the mark, we're in the Sehwag and India. That's the first four for Sehwag. Right there in the slot. And generally, when he hits the ball, it comes at the middle of the bat. Made a nice sound on that occasion. This will certainly please Verenda Sehwag. Batsmen like to feel the bat hitting the ball. Like to feel the leather on wood. And what better than early on in your innings? He placed it perfectly. Hitting point and cover there. All the way to the boundary for four. Has a great feel for the ball, Sehwag. Doesn't uh, move his feet a great deal, but generally the bat comes down nicely on the ball. Yet again, great timing on that occasion. On this occasion, he didn't have to make as big an adjustment as he did on the first ball. The first ball was fuller than this last one. He had to wait for it and ensure that he didn't turn it into a Yorker and guide it into the gap. On this occasion, the more conventional cover drive, just opening the face of the bat to ensure that it goes through the gap. Almost a carbon copy. That's four more runs to India. I'll be very happy with this start. And especially Sehwag, who likes to get on with the game very quickly. So good to see that he has got off to a quick start. Nine runs of just the six balls, two boundaries. Could be some inside edge on this one. Tut in the tie boot. Oh no, it's called buys. So it hit nothing as far as Shoka De Silva is concerned. Heat streak is having another look, staring down the pitch, wondering what happened there. But some movement after the ball pitched. That was prodigious movement back into the right handed Tendul Cup. The ball pitching outside the off stump and tarting back. It's gone such a long way that. And the tiber behind the stumps is nowhere near it, so it goes all the way to the boundary for four. It's gone off the edge, it's gone very quickly to third man. He's looking at his bat, Sehwag. The ball's gone for four. 31 for no wicket. Oh, that's going to go for four as well. That's beautifully struck. Can't bowl there to him. Well, the 50 comes up for the Indians in quick time. Now, that's a fine shot from Sevag on the onside. Very risky, but uh, one must have to say that the bowling's uh, been pretty ordinary in the last two or three overs. Plenty of loose deliveries on offer. Now, this is a loose delivery to any international player. 
over pitching on middle and leg. That's nicely worked. That's going to run away. It's a long boundary. Huge chase on for Hondo. Just unable to get there though. Magnificently timed. That's a very good shot. Plenty of work with the bottom hand. A nice wristy flick in the end. Gives Tendulkar the power in the placement. The bottom hand coming into play. The bat face closing at just the right time. Tendulkar's after the placement. Prepared to play the ball in the air like that. That's beautifully struck. Pull shot. Four more. Well, that's been uh, literally dismissed from his presence. Nice way to end the over, too. Two boundaries in that last over. And now Sevak starts off with a boundary. So the Indians on a roll at the moment. And once again, uh, the favorite square drive being employed. This is the last ball of the previous over. Dulka just smashing that away in front of mid wicket. And that was followed by this last boundary. Good placement. Wide and put away. This uh, could well be third man and does. The ball was there to be hit, but this is excellent placement, intentionally played in that area by Tendulkar. There was a short point and an orthodox point, and he played it fine enough to the left of that point fielder, but making sure that the third man couldn't get around it. Excellent placement. That was the only area where he could get a boundary, because there was a man in the deep. Bounce again, and this time put away in front of square. The dock is on the go. Well, again, the placement is spot on. That fielder at point, you can see in the picture, just to the left of him, narrowest of gap between those two fielders, and he's pierced it to perfection. And as the innings has progressed, as the fielding has spread, his strike rate is getting better and better. It's in the 90s now, along with Sehwag also in the 90s. And here's the 50, just dabbed down to third man. Sachin Tendulkar, another one-day international 50. And uh, it's looking ominous for Zimbabwe. 15 overs gone, 91 without loss. There's a nick, that'll be given out. It's well taken by Tatenda Taibu. The previous delivery, Sebek was trying to get away the fine late cut. This one, he has got the edge on it. It's gone too fine. It's gone into the keeper's gloves. He'll be very, very disappointed with this shot, Sewa. It was nicely set, looking good. And this was the time to accumulate the runs. Saw the room, trying to run it down to third man. And the second time in succession, he's got out, caught behind playing a similar shot a very healthy edge and significant deflection so you've got to say that was a good catch by young Tatenda Taibu so Guy Whittle gets the breakthrough Sewa gone for 36 India 99 for one Whittle has prevented uh, the opening pair from posting a hundred partnership just a little bit of extra bounce caused the dismissal Dennis Monge the left-hander who uh, got a few against Holland and uh, got a start against Australia Some extra bounds for Guy Whittle and sort of played under it. Virendra Sehwag, fielding restriction coming off, so there were a lot of areas where they could pick up the singles. That was the attempt that Sehwag made. Held the edge. Nicely played by Tendulkar. It's another boundary. While we were talking about Dinesh Mongia's weakness, Tendulkar is going from strength to strength it's great placement here 
We've seen a lot of uh, Tendulkar's drives go square of the wicket. This one's gone through an extra cover, orthodox position, hit with a lot of power. That's fine. It's going to be four. Boundary to end uh, the 19th over. 112 for one. Well, India scoring at above five and a half to the over. Projected score between 235 and 291. Let's see if they carry on at that rate. That's nicely played. That's going to run away, and it's going to run away for four. This is magnificent placement from Sachin Tendulkar on this occasion. He gets a straight ball, the ball on the stumps from Guy Woodley. He has been trying to bowl on the stumps. He just brings the bottom hand into play on this occasion to ensure that he beats that man at mid-on. He streak at mid-on. Interested all the way. He's run round, thought he could dive to get it, but it's just proved to be too far. A very, very good shot. This one, he's gone over the top, and he's out. Well, it had to tell in the end. The pressure on Dinesh Mongia was just too much. He wasn't getting Tendulkar on strike enough. He wasn't rotating the strike. Struggled to get ones. Getting the ball into the gaps was difficult for him, and eventually succumbed. Good bowling from Zimbabwe. A very well orchestrated pressure dismissal on this occasion. Dinesh Mongia, we were talking about how it was very difficult for him to get singles, get... Such an will come strike. Played out a dot ball and then decided to try and make something happen. Get such an on strike. Only managing holding out to Douglas Honda on the long on fence. He goes for 12 of 37 deliveries. India 142 for two. Departure of Dinesh Mongia brings the Indian skipper to the middle. 41.9 his average. Experienced campaigner. Beyond the 8,000 mark now. Oh! The non strike in though. The reason he's at the non strikers end is because Dinesh Mongia tried to get this ball down the ground in the air, trying to make something happen, only managed to hit it to Douglas Hondo. Yeah! He's bowled him. Sachin Tendulkar. He's been the mainstay of India's innings. A delivery from Grant Flower that's gripped on the turf, turns, beat the outside edge and cannoned into the off stump of Sachin Tendulkar. Look at those Zimbabweans, ecstatic. They know how important this wicket is. Well, two quick wickets here for Zimbabwe. And the big man, well, he was the danger to Zimbabwe. Fantastic delivery this from uh, Grant Flower. Gave it a real rip. And uh, Tendulkar comprehensively beaten here. Tried to work it, if anything, onto the leg side. Picked the wrong line and hit off stump. Beaten by the spin. He looks surprised, but the Zimbabweans absolutely... Well, he's not going off, though. Sachin Tendulkar on 81. Bold Grand Flower. Not sure what the delay is for. Grand Flower and his team ecstatic that they hit the off stump. But there's... I suppose just confirmation required from the third umpire that he indeed was bold. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind. Everything was fair and square. Beaten here by the turn. Pitched middle and hit off stump. Fantastic delivery. Keeper knows that uh, everything in order there. The umpires conferring. Has uh, Tender Tabo made any contact with the stumps? Absolutely not. He's far away. That's hit the off stump. Tendulka will have to make his way back to the pavilion and the Zimbabwean supporters go absolutely mad here they know the value of that wicket India 142 for three Raul Dravid well thoughts of a run here Side against it, so that pressure continuing to tell now. And a very, very good over for Zimbabwe. 142 for three. Yes! Oh. oh, 
now just out of the reach of midwicket. In fact, he got his hands to it. Yes, it was Grant Flower who just got fingers on it. He might just have split something here. What he has done is save four because he took enough pace off it with that valiant attempt to prevent the ball going to the boundary. Now, this is something Zimbabwe don't want. Uh, as you can see, he's cut his finger and it happens to be in the left hand. It's a spinning finger. So that will not help Zimbabwe in any way because uh, Grant Flower still had four overs left. Six overs, two for 14. I can't see him bowling for a while. That's the left hand. It's the forefinger. The finger you use to spin the ball. He's gone over the top this time. Is it going to go all the way? Yes, it does. A great shot there from uh, Saurav Ganguly. Takes him on to 20. And the body language of the captain has changed. Just have a look at him. The chest comes out. The walk becomes a lot more purposeful. And this is a glorious hit. Imran, it's gone all the way. It's gone over the rooftop. Have a look at this. Smack from the middle of the bat. And it's landed well past that roof that we have there. Right over the side screen. This is a big hit. Last delivery from Blichnot. Oh, he's gone straight up. This may be out. He's streak under it. Yes, taken. Well, that's the end of the Indian skipper. Ganguly makes his way back. He scored on 24. What a blow here. Zimbabwe once again bring the game back into their grasp. Of the 38 overs, India 182 for four. And the Indian captain will know Imran that he has made a big mistake here. It's the last ball of the over. A seamer who has troubled him. And at the other end, he was going to face a leg spinner. But what he does is looks to play in the air. He's looking to chip it over mid on, gets the leading edge, and the ball just balloons in the air. Heat streak is one of the safest catcher that you'll get. Got nicely underneath. Didn't worry too much about the logo mats there on which he was treading. The big wicket gone for 24. India 182 for four. The batsmen have been in good nick. He's one of them. Best of 98. Umpire shakes his head. That's another wicket. Well, well, well. It's all happening here for Zimbabwe. This time, Yuvraj Singh, unable to spend time at the wicket, brings up the fifth wicket for Zimbabwe. Well, blow here. Zimbabwe celebrate. It's not the greatest starter when it comes to spin bowling, Yuvraj Singh, but this is another good delivery. It's got the left hander onto the front foot. It's got him stretching. And I think he was playing for the spin, which wasn't there. Let's have a look. He yeah, played inside the line. Tatenda Taibu takes another catch. And the wickets seem to be falling in twos for India. Yuvraj Singh gone for one. The score 184 for five. So the new batsman on strike now, Mohammed Kaif. He comes in. 40th match. Average is just 30. He's got 100 to his credit, Mohammed Kaif. Just good spin bowling from Brian Murphy. Good length. It's a good length where you are in doubt whether to get onto the front foot or stay on the back. Not getting to the pitch of the ball because of the length. And he doesn't drop too many. Excellent technique as a wicket keeper. Exuberant young man. Tate the Taibu. Good to watch. And certainly set the cat amongst the pigeons. The stumps. Well, I think he would have been trouble had he hit. He was quick to take off was Mohammed Kaif. And uh, Dravid certainly was happy to take the single, but I think he would have been in trouble here, Sanjay. Well, this was a contest between two quick movers on the field, Brian Murphy and Mohammed Kaif. Direct hit, and that's been, I think, one of the problems with Brian Murphy. Even in the last game, he was brilliant in the field, but just could not get those direct hits for his side. This is at least the third or fourth time including the last match, where he missed out on a direct hit. Mohamed Kev will run the first single hard, as he always does. Brings up the 200 for India. Brings up the end of 10 overs for Brian Murphy. 43 overs gone.
That's well played. Extremely well timed by Dravid. Nice start to the over. Just what the Indians wanted. A welcome boundary. Oh, this shot is quite magnificent. Nothing too elaborate about it. It's just lent onto this ball. It's run down the wicket. It's not quite been there to hit. And he's just lent into it and hit it on the onside. Hit the field at mid-wicket. It seemed like the man at backward square would get round to collect it, but it was going way too fast. Well, that's well played. That's a cheeky shot. He knew exactly what he was doing, Kerf. Fine leg was up in the circle, so he just walked across the stumps and used the pace of the bowler. Another innovation from Mohamed Kaif showing his adaptability to these situations. He knows where the fielders are, he knows where they aren't, takes the necessary risks and gets the right outcome. This, on this occasion, moving on to the onside, just flicking the ball onto that side because the fine leg is up in the circle and it beats him. Beats the man at backward square as well and goes for four. So this is a good partnership. 37 these two have added. He goes for the big gun. It's a good straight hit for six. That's a good strike. So a good start to the over, four of the first ball, and now a big hit for six. A very clean strike by Mohamed Kaif, hits it straight back over the bowler. There's never a fielder there, looking for a space to hit, that's it. Now big pressure on the bowler. He's gone for 10 of the first two balls. Kev's moved on to 25. This is a very useful innings. Ah! Now this is going to be close. The finger goes up. Now the question to be asked was, was there any need for it? He got 10 of the first two. Again looking to walk across the stump. This time missing it altogether. Very, very welcome wicket for the Zimbabweans. Douglas Hondo sticking to his guns. Four of the first ball, six of the next one. And the third ball right up there in that hole at the stumps. He misses. That's going to hit middle stump. Trying to hit that onto the leg side again and get four. His time's up, says Ashoka de Silva. And Douglas Hondo very happy to see that. Quite well played. Innings by Mohamed Kaif. India now 227 for six. Harbhajan Singh comes out to the middle. Down the track in the air. Question to be asked is who's going to come underneath it? That is brilliantly taken. Brian Murphy made it look so easy. He had a long way to run. There were four fielders attacking that ball. But in the end, it was Murphy who took it comfortably. It looked like there was going to be a collision from up here. Craig Wishart came from mid-wicket. He came from a wide mid-off for cover position. He's run a long way. Brian Murphy, eyes fixed on the ball. You see the two players there, eyes on the ball. Wishart was never going to get there. Only with the dive he might have. But Brian Murphy, fantastic catch. Howajan goes for three. India, 234 for seven. a good strike he's found the gap as well that's what's required as far as the Indians are concerned and good footwork as well he chipped down the track took it on the full and found the gap on the onside I had said that he wasn't renowned for hitting the ball too hard he's struck this as clean as anyone could run down the wicket undergoing for the hole and the ball of your cut not quite getting there in his it well onto the onside, two wide for mid-on and four more to India. That's well struck. That's a fine shot from Zahir Khan. It might just have gone all the way. Well, the umpire just checking with the uh, third umpire. For a moment, one thought it was a six, but might have just landed inside. 
A lovely hit inside out. Very good shot. He's backed away slightly. The ball's been right in the slot. He's got a free swing off the bat. Alexander just in the boundary. It's gone for four runs. A very, very good shot. That is right up in the block hole, but well played by Zahir Khan. He's got it away to the boundary. Half-hearted effort by Andy Flaher there, sending it long on. The 250 has come up for India. Just thought it was a slower delivery attempted by Heat Streak. Well struck by Zahir. Zahir getting his feet out the way on that occasion, hitting it very cleanly. Andy Flower trying to just push that back, slipping through the fingers. A very, very welcome four runs for the Indians. Well, he didn't quite get hold of it. And he'll still look to run two and should get it comfortably. So the Indian innings comes to an end. After 50 overs, India 255 for seven. That's after Zimbabwe won the toss and decided to field first. So India making 255 for seven from their 50 overs. That's after Heat Streak won the toss and put India into bat. They got off to a good start. They reached 99 for no loss. And then uh, Sevak was dismissed. He made 36. He played well for his 36. But then Tendulkar, the top scorer, batted beautifully. 81 from 91 balls. And then towards the end of the innings, uh, Rahul Dravid held the Indian batting together. 43 from 55 balls. At the end of it all, 255 for seven. The Zimbabwean bowling, they lacked the discipline early on, but came back well towards the middle stages of the uh, game. Heat streak, nine overs, one for 46. Andy Blignot bowled well in his third spell, one for 54 for him. The pick of the bowlers, though, were the spinners. Brian Murphy, 10 overs, one for 40 at the bottom. But Grant Fla did a superb job. Six overs, two for 14, and he turned the match around. So the target now for Zimbabwe when they come out to bat will be 279 being his best score. Craig Bouchard started off this tournament in fine fashion. You see that career best score that came against Namibia. 74 matches for him. Good striker of the ball. That's for him. Outside edge taken. That was a quick delivery. So Srinath bang on target. Zimbabwe lose their first wicket. We talked about the fall of early wickets. Must have been a faint edge because Vermeulen was going nowhere. And look at the Indians in a huddle. They know how important this is. Feet had gone absolutely nowhere for Mark Vermeulen. Played this from the crease. A little bit of bounce with the new ball. Just a little hint of a wayward movement. And the classic dismissal effected in the first over. Vermeulen is gone without scoring. Zimbabwe are one for one. wicket in the first over has brought Zimbabwe's best batsman to the crease 207 matches well over 6,000 runs and he's got a fantastic record against the Indians that 145 the highest score made against India and that was in the Champions Trophy well that's where he likes the ball given with outside the off stump he's not quite timed it but he'll still get a boundary that's something you don't see too often, Tendulkar diving. The first boundary of the Zimbabwean innings. Well, the Namibians were guilty of letting Craig Wishart get a lot of easy four balls early in his knock. This one is too full and wide, and it's asking to be hit. He didn't get all of it. Nicely placed, though. So Wishart's away again here. A valiant attempt at the save. The momentum taking it over. Closed, doing a little bit too much. That bounce. But just looking at uh, that dismissal again, you know, what I want to see is the batter there. You know, normally when someone gets a neck, he's looking behind straight away. But Formulan was just looking down the track. So, very difficult to say from here. You can't really make out on the replay. Well, this is the last one, just doing a little bit too much. There was extra bounce for Srinath as well. And that would have missed leg stump. He's got hold of that. This is a quick outfield and a chase for Nera. 
once again it's the ball that wins. So boundary to end the over, 14 for one in Zimbabwe. Four overs bowled, 14 for one. India were 31 for no loss at this stage. Now this should be a good contest, Srinath versus Flower. Him. Has that taken the inside edge? The Indians go up, but it's a half-hearted appeal from Srinath. And watch Srinath here. There's no doubt that uh, Srinath has got this ball to come in off the wicket. An in-cut uh, at the left-hander, which is not his stock delivery. It has Andy Flower got an inside edge. Well, a definite sound here. Now, the question to be asked is, has it touched the sleeve on the way? Definite sound. Dravid was convinced. Srinath wasn't, nor was the umpire. Oh, bold ends, played on. Well, there's the breakthrough. Disciplined bowling from Srinath, and eventually, that consistency paid off. The first or second wicket now for Zimbabwe to go down. Just what India needed. Another breakthrough at the right time. One came very early. That is for Mullen. This is his partner. Just a bit too close to cut, I thought. And uh, as you said, it's because of the line that Srinath has been bowling to him. Hardly any room. So he was trying to find some room to play the shot. Get the scoreboard ticking inside edge onto the stumps. And the man who got the highest score for Zimbabwe in the last match has been dismissed. He's gone for 12 and Zimbabwe 23 for 2. Right-handed Grant Flower. Now he's uh, coming after injury. He was hit on the finger while he was uh, fielding. Grant Flower averaged 34. And it's just approaching 6,000 runs in one-day international cricket. Best of 142. Just short, or did it carry? Harbhajan Singh is the fielder. And again, Andy Fla floating with danger. I have a feeling, Sanjay, that this just carried. Didn't quite uh, get hold of it. You see, coming off the poor angle. Yeah, he could have got, uh, could have held on to that. He'll be disappointed. Now, there have been a couple of chances as well. Andy Flower opting for a different bat. Any idea what he may be looking for, Sanjay, just in terms of changing bats at this point? Seems a bit early. Unless he's just not comfortable. Maybe a new bowler, new bat. Ashish Nehra has been introduced into the attack. So that's the bat for Nehra. When he's taken off, he'll change that bat. 31 matches for this young upcoming seamer from uh, India. 3 for 30, his best. Oh, well, he starts off poorly. And it's just short of the boundary rope. It's gone for four. Very well-timed shot. He's got such a smart cricketing brain, Andy Fla. He knows Ashish Nehra is coming after a layoff. Didn't play the last game. He was very alert to this delivery. It's not such a bad delivery, but he knew the first ball for the youngster after a long, long time. So he was waiting to capitalize. Umpire is just having a look whether that uh, bounced inside the rope. I think it just did. If it's on the rope, then it qualifies as a six, but it's, I think, well short here. Yeah. You can see that. At least a yard short. And Ashoka De Silva will get that confirmation on his walkie-talkie very shortly. Not yet. There it comes. Four more to Andy Flau. Ah! He's bowled him behind his legs. This is a big wicket. He was concentrating on that line. Leg stump just outside. Andy Flau just waits. But there was a sound of the ball hitting the stumps. What a wicket here for the Indians. Zimbabwe's premier batsman dismissed. We did say something was going to happen. We didn't expect it to happen in this way. Andy Flower just going back to play. Regulation shot in his book. Just go back and guide that into the gap on the leg side. Misses the ball. 
This one turns a bit, hits the stumps, and he's bold. He thinks he's got some contact on it and is going off for a run. Very surprised. But he has to go. Andy Flower gone for 22. Zimbabwe 48 for three. New batsman for Zimbabwe, Dion Abraham. 38 matches. That's firmly struck. He might have just got his hands to it. Ashish uh, Nera. Well, that has got enough fat on it to reach the boundary. We were just saying, Ravi, how the spectators would like to see a few boundaries, a few runs for the Zimbabwean. Dion Abrams just walked in. He hit a couple of balls. Way, but he's played a very good shot on this occasion. Straight down the ground. Indians chasing every single thing down, unable to get that. It's four more. Yes. Oh, not turning as much as beautifully timed. This is, may run all the way to the fence. There's a chase on, but he's not going to get there. Four valuable runs of the bat of Grand Flower. And delight, particularly from that young lady waving the uh, flag in the crowd. Grand Flower's picked this one. He's seen the ball coming straight on, given himself room and just placed it. That's all he had to do in the end. Uh, this is a quick outfield. There's the big one. He's gone over the top. This may well be out. Harbhajan Singh underneath. And he's taken it. Very, very good catch. Ganguly absolutely delighted. He knows he needed the big wicket. And that's the second flower brother, Grant, and this time and has to make his way back. Grand Flower was definitely tempted to hit the ball over the top here. I think Ganguly's held it back slightly, and it's short of a length. Difficult to get the pace you need off the bat. This was in the air for a long time. It's beautifully judged by Harbhajan Singh. He had to make 20 or so yards running backwards, but he never looked in difficulty with it. Grand Flower has become another victim of this inning. Zimbabwe's struggling now. 83 for four. Andy Blichnot, he makes his way into the middle. Average is 22.2, best score of 63 not out. Only got 245, so relatively new in terms of his career, one day international cricket. But he has to play a vital role here for his country. A full shot, that's gone in the air and that's out. Well, well, well. Two wickets and two deliveries for the Indian captain. He absolutely delighted. Good catch in the outfield. Ajit Agaka. He completes it and, believe it or not, but the Indian skipper is on a hat-trick. Well, the previous delivery was well sought out. The Grand Flower wicket. This one is a loose delivery. Dropped it short. Ibram hasn't even thought about rolling the wrist. He hasn't thought about placement and he's hit it straight at the fielder. And really, two wickets in a row at this stage for Zimbabwe is going to be costly. 83 for five. It's up in the air, it's gone high. Catchable, there's a fielder getting under that one, yeah. takes it comfortably. Dinesh Monga is the man in the deep. And he took some good high catches. Saurav Ganguly has picked up his third wicket. Man with the golden arm, they call him. Today it's a platinum arm. Well, what a spell for Sarav Ganguly. 2.3 overs and he's got three wickets. Andy Blicknote trying to flick this onto the leg side, trying to get a boundary. Only succeeding it, hitting it way up into the air. Ongia having to run around a long way. Look how happy he is. He's certainly done the job today. A lot of relief for the Indian team. And Andy Blicknote gone for two. Zimbabwe 87 for six. Right, India now looking very good indeed. Zimbabwe in desperate trouble. 88 for six. The last wicket of Andy Blignot was, uh, well, he was one hope at this stage. Only succeeded in scooping that way up into the air. Nash Mongia running around. We've seen good catches throughout this game. Oh, 
Oh, there's some runs here. I think it's Yuvraj Singh was just backing in from that position inside the circle on the leg side. Four welcome runs for Zimbabwe. 95 for six. And he's gone over the top and nicely done. They packed a punch on that one, Guy Whittle. So this is turning out to be a difficult over for Saurav Ganguly. Guy Whittle picked his spot. Saurav Ganguly, nice friendly pace. He's whipped that onto the leg side. Couple of bounces and over the boundary. Four more to Guy Whittle. Very good shot. So 10 runs of the over so far. Good pickup. The perfect length to play that kind of shot. Straight and clean. It's another boundary for Guy Whittle. He's making sure that none of the Indian fielders reckon that the match is over. Very good shot from Guy Whittle. Use of the feet. He's down the wicket. Cleanly hits this percentage shot, seeing as the mid off fielder was in the circle. Hits it cleanly, goes all the way to the boundary for four. Gone for the cut, and he's been taken by Zahir Khan. This is a brilliant catch. He's a left hander, mind you, and he's gone to the wrong side to take this uh, very, very good catch. And Guy Whittle must consider himself unlucky. Tower of Ganguly has been very, very good with these bowling changes and they've all worked. On this occasion, Guy Whittle going for the cut shot, a little bit short from Miranda Sewag. Whittle trying to pierce that offside field. Look at that, what a catch. Diving to his right. Sahir Khan completes a very, very good catch. How happy is he? He knows how important this game has been. How important it is. I would have gone. He got 28. Zimbabwe 124 for seven. Heat streaks the new man at the crease. Played 151 matches. Average of 24.27. With Guy Whittle's departure. There's also going to be a change in the commentary box. As we watch that beautiful catch from Zahir Khan. Take you through the rest. The Shastri is with Imran Munshi. Thank you, Pomi. Look at that reaction from Guy Bittal. He's absolutely disgusted. He's a dangerous player and was looking good. I mean, 28 or 26 balls. 113 required to 75 balls. Missed everything, attempted the reverse sweep, he's foxed everybody. Four by signal. Certainly fooled the keeper. Uh, Dravid will not be happy, neither will Harbhajan Singh. <laughs> I think he enjoyed that. What's Dravid behind here? This is the reverse sweep attempted, gets it all wrong, and uh, Dravid in anticipation of that. Dummy. India at the same stage, 182 for the loss of four wickets. 33 behind with three more wickets, Zimbabwe. There's the big shot down the track. Is it going to be out? No, it's not. Well, Sahir Khan he should have held on to that one, certainly. In and out. Disappointment there for him. It was just a matter of time before he came down the track. Well, he'll be disappointed. It was pretty straightforward in the end. He covered the ground well. It was a flat hit. He had not timed it well. Zahir Khan just looking to grab at the ball. He's taking his eyes off it. After a wonderful catch that he took off Sewag, suddenly an easier one. Straight to him. And he's let uh, his side down there. He won't be happy. Oh, unlucky. Valiant effort there. But four more valuable runs this for Zimbabwe. Very important that the Indians don't let go of the situation. They've got to try and go for the kill. Oh, 
and he was attempting the sweep shot earlier. This time he's got it right. Good effort by Sevak, but in the end, the ball's still getting through. So I think Streak has decided enough is enough. Uh, he has to take his chances. In the air and taken. A big man getting out to a soft dismissal. The top edge, careful making no mistake. And Zimbabwe have lost their eighth wicket. Well, it was a matter of time before he attacked Anubhajan Singh. But he went about it the wrong way here. It cost him his wicket. Always anticipating. And that suddenly just bounced on him. Comfortable catch there for Mohammed Kaif. That short fine leg. So Harbhajan Jan Singh celebrates. And uh, Zimbabwe lose another wicket. Heat streak this time. The captain out for 20. Zimbabwe 160 for 8. 160 for 8. Brian Murphy is the new man out in the centre. Bowl them. Brian Murphy's gone. Zahir Khan has done the business for the Indians. Well, we lose their ninth wicket. Really, the cause lost 165 runs, nine wickets gone. Well, Brian Murphy just never looked happy with the pace of Zahir Khan. He's been beaten time and again, and this one's just gone right through him. Trying to hit the ball through the leg side, it's taken off with the angle of the delivery. Brian Murphy's the ninth wicket to four, 165 Zimbabwe. Douglas Hondo, the last man in for Zimbabwe, who are still 90 behind the required. And that's cleaned up. Zaya Khan has uh, finished it off for India. The agony's over for Zimbabwe. It's 172 all out as Hondo is clean bowled. The Indians will be very, very happy. Zahir Khan has bowled well today. He gets his second wicket, a good delivery. Which is on about middle, beats the outside edge and crashes into the off stump. Douglas Hondo has gone for two. Zimbabwe are all out for 172. So good performance by India to bowl out Zimbabwe for 172. Plenty of Zimbabwean batsmen getting into the 20s, but no one really kicking on to make the big score. And that was the real problem. Titenda Taibu, the top scorer with 29, and Guy Whittle played well for his 28. And until Whittle was there, Zimbabwe had an outside chance. The Indian bowling was first class. Javagal Srinath leading the way, two for 14 from his eight overs. He got support from all the other bowlers. Two wickets for Zahir Khan. Harvajan Singh got a couple of wickets as well. And Saurav Ganguly, it was a good day for him. Three for 22 from his five overs. So that's the story of the day. After 50 overs, India made 255 for seven. They bowled out Zimbabwe for 172. India winning by 83 runs. Sachin Tendulkar for his 81 was the man of the match. And he was very delighted as well at the uh, presentation. Indian captain was even more delighted. Yeah, this was an important game for us, uh, considering that they got two points from England. So we had to win this game. Uh, but obviously there's pressure when you play when you play international cricket. Obviously it's such a big tournament. But I thought the reactions were a bit too much after the loss against Australia, uh, because it was just early part of the World Cup. But all said and done, we played well today. Uh, we've got a lot of cricket ahead. We've got to play England and Pakistan and, and qualify to the Super 6 with some points. That's the key. But I'm very happy with the boys, with the way the boys fought today, especially the intensity they showed on the field. Well, that's the table for you. India, by virtue of the win today and uh, collecting four points, they've moved to the top of the table along with Australia and Zimbabwe. And still, this is a very, very tough group. There's still teams like England and Pakistan there in with a chance. England take on Pakistan in a big game on Saturday. So we hope you enjoyed the highlights.